Terrence Crawford, uh, his name keeps coming up, and I know he's a lot smaller than you. Is that a fight that you would ever consider under any circumstance? Crawford Terrence, I know he's much smaller than you, but his name keeps coming up. Is it anything you would ever consider fighting for? I always say it makes sense, so why not? But he's not in the plan. Canelo Alvarez has responded brutally to Terrence Crawford's call for a fight. Meanwhile, WBA, WBC, and WBO heavyweight champion Alexander Usyk thinks that Crawford will prevail over Canelo if their highly anticipated fight occurs in the first few months of 2019. Usyk believes that Crawford's technical skill will be crucial in defeating Canelo's bulk and strength. According to rumors, His Excellency Turkey Alec is in favor of it and agreed to pay Canelo a reasonable price for the battle. The precise number is unclear but Canelo would need to be exceedingly wealthy to want to risk damaging his name by competing against a welterweight. I believe Taron triumphs because he has changed. According to Alexander Yusek on the 3 Knockout Rule YouTube channel, Taron works on both the right and left. If that fight goes as planned, Yusek believes Terrence Crawford will defeat Canelo Alvarez at 168 next year. He also added that he feels Taron can box like a big guy because Floyd Mayweather Jr. made over $200 million for his matchup with Manny Pacquiao. Given that he faces a fighter akin to Floyd Mayweather, Canelo Alvarez may demand a compensation package similar to that of Mayweather. But Turkey is unlikely to consent to such a large payout for a Canelo Crawford fight, as it is anticipated to fall short of the record-breaking pay-per-view figures produced by Mayweather vs. Pacquiao in 2015. Both fighters were major draws for pay-per-view, while Crawford has only had one successful pay-per-view event in his 16-year career, against Errol Spence in 2023. However, it was Spence, not Crawford, who served as the real catalyst for that success. When facing Canelo, Crawford is anticipated to follow Mayweather's lead and employ a tactical game that emphasizes continual movement and deceptive footwork to stay out of harm's way and obtain a decision. Triumph, even if there were no fireworks throughout the fight, Crawford's calculated strategy should help him accomplish his goal of outwitting Canelo and avoiding the knockout zone. Crawford is unlikely to outlast Canelo in a fight. Therefore, he will try to box his way through all 12 rounds in an attempt to adopt Mayweather's tactic. Technical boxing fans will love the Canelo-Crawford fight, but fans of nonstop action may be let down. As he said, if he beats Jaunt, for example, everyone will say, Yeah, it's this small right and this and that, so it's the same thing. Although Grafford is a skilled fighter, I still hold him in high regard. When a reigning champion fights someone who has advanced three weight classes to the sixth round of the global boxing tournament, it becomes ridiculous. For example, if Crawford were to move up to take on Canelo for his WBA, WBC, and WBO super middleweight titles, Crawford has made it clear that his ultimate goal at this time is to challenge Canelo at super middleweight. The Mexican fighter has previously downplayed the significance of this challenge, arguing that defeating a smaller opponent wouldn't earn him much respect, yet Bud remains. Canelo stands to gain nothing from this bout and will likely face public scorn regardless of the outcome. Even though Crawford faced Israel Madoff this Saturday, A bout between him and Canelo would still be perceived by fans as the Mexican superstar fighting, despite being relentless in his pursuit of victory and having fought his way through the top contenders at 168 to get a shot at Canelo. Neither boxer has been successful this year. Only David Novitz can match that level of determination. After losing the IBF belt, Canelo will defend three of the four main championships against Edgar Berlanga on September 14. Floyd Mayweather, a 50-0 fighting great, discussed the issue with fight hype and suggested that Crawford and Benoff square off. He said, I think he's a super, super, super skillful fighter, very talented fighter. I thought about this if he wants to go to 168 and he wants to fight Canelo and Benevitz wants to fight Canelo. They can't get Canelo. They can fight each other, Benevitz and Crawford. Both you guys are chasing one fighter. Y'all can't get that fight. Then y'all should say we'll fight each other. It's a fascinating idea. Though it seems quite improbable, Bud has previously stated that his goal is to have Canelo's name etched onto his record, rather than just facing a larger opponent. Meanwhile, Ben Aids has recent recently lied committed to the light heavyweight division for the foreseeable future, especially after his attempts to 
lure Canelo into a title defense fell short. Meanwhile, Sean Porter has told Topport that Crawford is surely capable of defeating Canelo. Now retired from the ring, Porter has shifted gears to become a pundit in LA, gearing up for Crawford's WBA Super Welterweight World Title Showdown against Israel Madoff this Saturday night should the American triumph. He will become a member of an exclusive group of four weight world champions Crawford's goals. However, don't stop there. In the end, he wants to move up two more classes to face Canelo, the reigning super middleweight champion. But first, he needs to defeat Madoff, who has never lost when asked what Madoff will face on Saturday. Porter replied to Port that he's just a stone-cold athlete who exudes confidence and is obviously incredibly skilled and talented. Madoff faces intense competition against players with exceptional athleticism, speed, power, and unmatched intelligence. Porter continued, saying that if I were in Madoff's corner, I would advise sticking to your course of action and perhaps hitting a button at the appropriate moment. Regarding Crawford versus Canelo, when asked if he thought Madoff, the fighter he is promoting, could defeat a generational talent like Crawford, Porter said that his former rival can win. He even went so far as to suggest that depending on Crawford's performance against Madrimov, it might not strike him as an upset if Canelo were to fall to the naturally smaller fighter. Porter insisted that it's a realistic fight in some way. I don't think so, especially if Terrence wins here on fight night against Mav. I think it's not an upset. It's a 55,050 to me. Eddie Hearn clarified that time was important, acknowledging that he had supported Israel Madoff even though he was a notable underdog. Hearn stated that Madoff had many of the required attributes, including technical talent, intelligence, strength, and durability, noting that he wasn't an unfit 154-pound fighter or a weak puncher, and that Madoff could theoretically meet or almost match Crawford. Hearn acknowledged that Crawford was much favored since he was a generational great. When asked if Crawford wanted to fight Canelo and if Canelo was intrigued in the bout, Hearn also said that Madoff would have ideally benefited from two or three more fights, but highlighted that seizing the moment was vital. When Eddie Hearn asked if Canelo would accept the fight after battling Ed Berlanga on September 14, Canelo said that he wasn't too excited about it since he thought that defeating the smaller Crawford wouldn't give him much credit. Hearn stated that Canelo was more worried about the attention he would get for winning than he was about Terence Crawford and that Canelo would consider fighting in any match if the money was right. Hearn explained that if he wins, it will be as though he defeated a 154-pound fighter and a 147-pound fighter who just showed up, and if he loses, it will be as though he was defeated by a 54-pound fighter with Canelo. I genuinely believe that Canelo chooses his fighters based on the styles that he enjoys, which is why he chose Edgar Berlanga and Hamonja. Hearn also stated that Canelo was uncomfortable with the way Gelcharo moved, indicating that he favored opponents who came forward and engaged over those who moved and boxed from the back foot. I don't think he liked going up against fighters that move their bodies, according to Hearn, and that's probably not quite how it was when Gelcharo ran off the back foot. When asked about his erratic relationship with Alvarez, who will next fight Matchrooms Berlanga on a PBC Le show, Canelo said that he didn't like it or enjoy it. He wants someone who comes to fight, and he'll fight anyone. However, he also has a number in his head.